Well, so what I have is vertex form, y equals a times x minus a squared plus k. And what I want to do is show you how to use vertex form to help us graph the equation y equals 3x squared. Now, the important thing about vertex form is we know that we're going to have transformations and also dilations by when we have an equation that's in vertex form. Now, when looking at this, we know that h and k, remember that shifts are graphed left and up and down. So when we look at our equation that we want to graph, y equals 3x squared, we notice that we're not shifting this graph left or right or up or down as h or k are both 0. However, we do know that a equals 3. And that's going to be important because we need to remember what does a represent. Remember, a is going to tell us if we're going to reflect over the x-axis. And a is also going to tell us if there's going to be a dilation, a stretch either horizontally or vertically. So what we're going to do is when we look at this, so that means this parent graph is not going to be shifted left or right, but now rather it's just going to be either compressed or stretched. So when I'm graphing this, I now know that my vertex is going to remain exactly the same. So I can just put the dot at my vertex, so that's going to remain the same. And also the axis of symmetry, the line that my graph is reflected upon, is going to be the same as well. So I'll just be able to write the vertex equals 0 comma 0. And the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. So now that I have my vertex and my axis of symmetry are the same, now I need you to be able to determine how do I go to find my next two points. Well, when a equals 1, you can see you go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. But that's not going to be the case when my a is changed. So to see how this is going to be affected, I need to go back and create a table of values. Now, I'm only going to have to do this for two values, either to the left or to the right. And then what I'll use is I'll use, um, I'll use my symmetry to reflect over the axis of symmetry. So we know that 0 is going to be my axis of symmetry. So let's just pick two points to the right. Let's just pick 1, and let's just pick 2. All right. And again, once I find my y coordinates for there, I'll be able to graph half of it. Then I can apply the axis of symmetry to graph the other part of my parabola. All right, so let's go and evaluate for 1 and 2. So I'll have uh, y equals 3 times 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. And then I have y equals 3 times 2 squared. Well, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. And 0, we know, is going to be 0 because that's our vertex. So over at 1, I go up 3. 1, 2, 3. And over 2, I'm now going to go up 12. 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we can see that my graph takes the shape of this. But remember, that's only half of it, because now I can reflect it over my axis of symmetry, which is at 0. So at negative 1, I'll go up 3. And at negative 2, I'll go up to 12. And that will now complete my parabola. As you can see, that these just, as I go left 1 and left 2, I'm just going to have the exact same output values. So now you can see this is my a. When it was larger than 1, it actually compressed my graph horizontally. You can see by comparing these two, the vertex axis symmetry are all the same, but now the graph has been kind of compressed horizontally. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph with the dilation. Thanks.